that is a qualitative analysis of proteins okay so uh, before move on to the uh, qualitative analysis of protein uh, i know that you have learned uh, many things on protein in your theory classes so what do you know about protein is it uh, what is the uh, elements in protein what are the elements uh, in protein is it a biopolymer or is it just a uh, uh, micromolecule what do you know about proteins so that, that that's a simple question what are the um, elements available in protein carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen carbon hydrogen oxygen oxygen nitrogen and sometimes uh, sulfur. yes sulfur good then is it a uh, macromolecule or a micromolecule what do you, what do you, what do you say about that macromolecule yes. macromolecule it's a macromolecule consisting of amino amino acids and uh, what is the bond between amino acid in a protein peptide peptide bond. good so with that knowledge we uh, here uh, we will do some qualitative analysis of proteins okay first of all uh, according to our practical uh, schedule we have to do some sample preparation for a uh, few kinds of proteins okay in here we we going to use uh, gelatin egalbumin casein and peptone okay so after that we are going to uh, test uh, those proteins for different uh, properties of protein okay so uh, first of all uh, tell me what are the what what are the differences you see between uh, gelatin egalbumin casein and peptone are all these are uh, protein so uh, uh, what, what do you think gelatin egalbumin casein and peptone gelatin peptone egalbumin and casein yes all are proteins yes good then uh, can you see any difference between gelatin peptone versus uh, egalbumin egalbumin and casein that's a very general question are gelatin and peptone naturally occur compared to egalbumin and casein no gelatin and peptone are synthetic proteins it means uh, uh, those proteins need to be produced and uh, when it compares to uh, egalbumin casein they are natural proteins so that's the difference between egalbumin peptin and egg, uh, uh, gelatin and peptone egalbumin casein and gelatin and peptone okay simply gelatin and peptone are synthetic proteins while egalbumin and casein are natural proteins okay so in this experiment first of all we need to prepare the samples for our analysis for that uh, i'll quickly quickly go through this and uh, uh, then uh, after showing uh, you the video then we can uh, deeply uh, discuss about the necessary aspects okay so in here we have you have to take uh, one to two grams of gelatin uh, into a small beaker and cover with uh, about 50 milliliters of all this water in a beaker and allow to start uh, for stand for about half an hour and uh, dissolve by warming gently you have to dissolve that by gently stirring in uh, hot water and uh, pour off a small portion into a test tube and hold under tap not the observations dilute the uh, remainder to about 100 mm to use for the uh, qualitative test for it means for for the analysis so when we prepare in the egalbumin or casein solution uh, you have to uh, prepare a uh, dispersion by taking the dry material and suspending in warm water and use the suspension for the qualitative test when it comes to peptone you have to prepare a solution in hot water make slightly acidic and acidic with acetic acid and filter if necessary use the solution for qualitative test okay so uh, it compared to these four proteins uh, egalbumin and casein contain 100% protein but uh, gelatin and peptone may consist of other uh, Uh, components than protein so i will show you the uh, practical protocol in
today our practical is the identification of protein for that we have uh, some samples of gelatin pepton casein and albumin uh, before uh, we are going to uh, start the experiment we have to uh, make sample solution from each of these uh, given samples for that we are going to take few uh, few amount uh, from a given sample and we are going to add uh, hot water and we are going to make a uh, suspension And we are going to dissolve it using a glass drop. Likewise, we are going to uh, take the samples out and we are going to dissolve it. by dissolving the sample in the hot water and uh, first we are going to practice the coagulation test for that we are going to take uh, a little amount from these samples and we are going to uh, boil them over the Bunsen burner and uh, we will see uh, how the coagulation occurs. We are going to take a little amount and uh, we are going to heat it. Here I use the pepton. <coughs> and you will see, although we uh, heat it, there is no coagulation occurs. Then I will take the gelatin. In gelatin also you will see there is no coagulation occurred. Okay. Then 
I'm moving to Casey. We will discuss it again. And similarly, we are going to take silver wire from the KC sample solution and we are going to boil it. Here in KC, you will see a, a coagulation. Okay. Then we will uh, repeat the procedure for a gallon. This is the prepared solution. We are going to take a few amounts as previous into the boiling seal. And then we are going to heat it. Here in a galbumin also you will see a coagulation. Okay. Then final observation is you may see that the uh, natural proteins gave a coagulation while synthetic proteins didn't give a coagulation. Here you may see coagulation in the natural proteins. And here, in synthetic protein, we are not observing any coagulation. In the next step, we are going to observe the precipitation formed uh, in the uh, protein test solution that we have made. And uh, for that, uh, we need, we are using mercuric nitrate and lead acetate. And uh, first, we are going to take 3 milliliters from each of the 
on test solution. We are going to add the 3 milliliters from each of the solution. Now I am taking from the casing. Next, from pepton, 3 milliliters from the pepton. And finally, from the gelatin. Next, uh, I'm going to add a few drops of mercury nitrate for each of the samples. As the precipitation occurs in the egg albumin uh, with the mercury nitrate. Then I am going to test it with casein. In casing also, it forms the precipitation with the mercury nitrate. Then I am moving to the pepton. Pepton also gives a precipitation with the uh, mercury nitrate. Then finally, we are using gelatin and we are going to add few drops of mercury nitrate. And here also, you may you may observe a precipitation. Okay. Uh, you may have seen that all these uh, test samples gave a precipitation with the mercury nitrate. Next, we are going to practice the uh, previous same procedure uh, with the uh, Lead acetate. Uh, for this also, first I'm going to measure three milliliters from each sample.
a gadolinium then 3 ml of gelatin We are going to add few drops from lead acid. And I am going to add lead acetate, few drops, into all of these samples. You may see all of these samples gave a precipitation with uh, lead acetate. Okay, uh, so in here, uh, we tested the properties of protein. Uh, first of all, we prepared the uh, given protein solutions, uh, protein samples by dissolving it with the hot water. And then uh, we uh, tested that for uh, coagulation as well as precipitation. So those are very basic uh, identification tests for proteins. Okay, in here, if you have uh, observed the process carefully and uh, a, a coagulate has not uh, given for uh, gelatin and pepto. A coagulation has not given for uh, gelatin and pepto. So what could be the reason for that? So in here, even though the uh, video is lengthy, lengthy uh, the process is very simple. We just uh, dissolve the uh, the given protein samples with hot water and prepared uh, sample samples for our analysis. So sample solution for our analysis. Okay, and then we uh, boil the solution in open flame using the uh, boiling tube so that. Uh, uh, upon boiling, you have uh, you might have observed that uh, egg albumin and casein gave uh, uh, coagulations, but uh, uh, peptone and uh, gelatin didn't. What is the reason for that? And also, one student asked asked the question that uh, what why it is uh, different 
to make the uh, white is different, making a gelatin solution. So gelatin is a, is a biopolymer uh, made out of a thermal uh, denaturation of a, uh, animal bones and skin proteins and uh, it has a very specific property you know that uh, when you prepare in a gel uh, that, that gelatin in your home uh, you have to dissolve gelatin in hot water okay so upon uh, and after that you have to uh, keep that in the refrigerator and upon cooling it will get solidified and uh, get a gel structure so uh, in here, the, the preparation of gelatin solution for our analysis is different is that uh, if we use, uh, uh, this is uh, high molecular weight uh, proteins, gelatins are, and if we use a uh, uh, higher gelatin uh, weight, and that will be solidified, and uh, we cannot use that for our analysis. That is why there's a specific procedure for that. You have to take a one to two, two grams, and after that, you have to dilute that. Okay, so when when it get solid solidified, uh, we cannot uh, do other uh, uh, experiments. So that that's the reason for that. Okay, I think uh, the I I gave gave you the answer. Okay, so uh, can you answer for my question? Why gelatin and pepton uh, didn't give a, a coagulate? What could the reason? What could be the reason for that? And peptones are also uh, protein hydrolysates uh, prepared by, uh, usually prepared by enzymatic hydrolysis of proteins. Okay. And uh, the peptones as well as gelatins, that is why I call that they are synthetic proteins or so man made proteins, but egalbumin uh, and casein are natural proteins. So these synthetic proteins are uh, much resistant. To heat, that's why they they do not uh, coagulate upon heating. Okay, but uh, then these natural proteins may get coagulate upon heating. What is meant by coagulation? Coagulation is the uh, is a process of uh, uh, I mean uh, changing its uh, structure and uh, getting precipitate. Getting pre precipitating the micelle, uh, micellar structure of caseins and other proteins. Okay, it means uh, it will lose its uh, natural structure and get precipitated or get uh, concentrated the micellars, protein micellars. That's why you observe that as a uh, in a top layer, you observed some uh, coagulate coagulates. Okay, so natural protein will. Uh, Readily coagulate while synthetic proteins will not coagulate uh, using mild heat. Okay, so in that property we tested under coagulation. So th this is a good simple test to uh, identify whether protein is synthetic or natural. Okay, so coagulation test can be used to distinguish between a peptone. Gelatin and it can be in case it means natural and synthetic proteins. Okay, then if you have observed the <clears throat> practical procedure carefully, after that we do precipitation uh, test. We for that we use the mercuric nitrate and lead acetate. And uh, you have you may have observed that uh, all the protein samples we um, obtained for the analysis gave precipitate precipitates. Uh, uh, when we uh, added mercuric nitrate and lead acetate. So what is meant by precipitation and what, uh, what is the reason for that? I'm, I'm, I'm very much sure that you have learned that in your practice. What is meant by precipitation and what is the reason behind that? Why proteins get precipitated when we add in uh, mercuric nitrate and later state like solutions. So let me ask that question from uh, why uh, these proteins, all the proteins independent of the, uh, uh, independent of whether it is natural or synthetic, why 
all the all the proteins get uh, precipitated upon addition of uh, mercuric nitrate and lead acetate. May not uh, answer that because of protein uh, denaturation. Denaturation exactly. Okay, proteins get denaturated upon addition of heavy metals. Okay, you know that uh, in mercuric nitrate as well as lead acetate, it, uh, they contain heavy metals. Okay, mercury and lead. So, uh, mer uh, mercury and lead, uh, that means the uh, heavy metals can precipitate or denature, denature proteins. Okay, denature is the process of loosening proteins, its uh, natural structure and uh, biological, physical, as well as chemical function. Okay, so, uh, so uh, when it uh, lose its natural structure, uh, it can precipitate, uh, proteins can get precipitated. So that's the reason for that. Okay, then tell me what are the other uh, denaturated, denaturated uh, tends, you know, for protein? What are the agents? other agents that we can use to precipitate or denature, denature proteins. What are the other things that we can use to denature proteins? High temperature is okay. yes, high temperature, strong acid and strong base. Yes, good. Other than that, Some organic solvents like ethanol and uh, uh, cross-linking uh, agents like formaldehyde and heavy metals. And uh, yes, we can use uh, many, many things to denature proteins. So in here we used uh, heavy metals, okay? So, so why are proteins get uh, denature when we add in uh, heavy metals? What is the reason for that? There should be a specific reason for that. Why? Okay, then I'll tell you the reason. This mercuric nitrate and, and uh, lead acetate contain uh, heavy metals. In, uh, uh, it contain high molecular weight cations, HD2+, as well as PB2+, lead 2+. So these high molecular weight uh, cations can react with uh, carboxylate groups in uh, amino acids and uh, destroy its structure. As well as uh, these uh, uh, high molecular weight cations, it means heavy metals, can uh, destroy disulfide bonds. So uh, when uh, this happens, uh, protein, uh, the natural structure of proteins will uh, lose thereby our proteins will be uh, denatured, denatured, okay? So that's the reason for that, okay? That, so those are very basic uh, tests to identify proteins, coagulation test and precipitation test, okay? So in your, in your advanced level uh, chemistry, you have learned about other tests to identify proteins. Can you remember what are them? particularly about uh, three tests, three uh, qualitative te uh, tests. Can you remember? So in the, as the next experiment, we are going to uh, use one test. One is biorate test. So we, we, are, dis we are discussing about uh, qualitative analysis of proteins. It means uh, two biochemical experiments or tests that we can use to identify proteins. So that's what we done for uh, lipids uh, and carbohydrates also. We have learned some uh, simple experiments to identify carbohydrates and proteins. In this, ex in this practical, it is, we are discussing qualitative, simple qualitative uh, biochemical experiments to identify proteins. Okay, Masala mentioned uh, santhoprotein test. Yes, santhoprotein test. Uh, also, we are going to discuss that in this a practical session. Other than that, santhoprotein, biorate, and sulfur reactions is Milan. Milan test. Okay, Milan test as well as ninhydrin test, uh, which we 
not going to discuss in this uh, practical. So other than uh, biorate reaction, uh, xanthoprotein reaction, xanthoprotein test, and the sulfur test, we can use a Milan test as well as an inhydrin test to uh, uh, distinguish proteins from other uh, uh, biomolecules. Okay, so as the next experiment, I'm going to discuss with you about biorate test. Okay, so this is a very specific and uh, widely used uh, biochemical experiment to distinguish proteins. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that you have learned about a rate test in your uh, advanced level chemistry. Uh, and what is the principle behind bio rate uh, test? So what can you say about biorate test? Will all the proteins uh, give positive results for biorate test? And what are the limitations of biorate test? Can you think? What are the limitations of biorate test? And uh, what is the principle behind biorate test and biorate reaction? Okay, then uh, as a uh, peptide bond. Yes, yes, definitely. Peptide bonds uh, will form a complex with uh, Cu2 plus ion that we're going to use in this uh, test. And uh, that complex is in purple color. So that's the, uh, uh, that is the principle behind this biorate test. So you know that all the proteins contain peptide bonds. May us uh, can you mention all pi test for protein again? So uh, we are going to discuss about biorate test, anthoprotein test, and sulfur test. So uh, each test have different objectives. Other uh, that we uh, we are going to discuss those three three tests in this uh, practical. And uh, other than that, we can use a Milan test as a less hydrin test to distinguish. Uh, proteins, but also they have specific objectives. Okay, and I I told you that biorate test or biorate reaction is very specific type of test in uh, protein identification because all the proteins contain peptide bonds. You know that all the proteins are made out of amino acids, so amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds. Okay, so a uh, biorate reaction will occur when there are when there's peptide bonds. Okay, so all the proteins will give positive results for biorate test. Okay, so in here, <clears throat> uh, we have to get uh, the prepared protein solutions, and uh, uh, you have to add a small amount of distilled water to dilute that. And uh, after that, you have to add a few drops of copper sulfate and uh, you have to basify that with sodium hydroxide. And after, when, you, when you're doing that, you will observe a color change, okay? Then in, uh, in this experiment, if you have uh, uh, went through the procedure carefully, we are going to use a, uh, urea also. I mean, urea as a sample. So what, what do you know about urea? Is it a protein? Is it a protein, urea? No. Yes, no. One of the uh, limitation of biorate tests is that urea also can give positive results for uh, biorate reaction or biorate test. Okay, you should know that. But the, the uh, biorate test is the uh, one of the widely used a qualitative test to identify proteins, as well as uh, even though this uh, is used as a qualitative test, this can be further developed as quantitative analysis. Okay, so if you if you need to uh, calculate the concentration of proteins in a given sample, we can use biorate test. Can you think how? So upon addition of uh, copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide, when there is presence of peptide bonds, it will give, it will form a uh, color. 
particularly purple color. Okay, so how can we use this property for uh, quantitative analysis? So that's a basic qualitative uh, or identification test for proteins. So we can uh, develop this biorate test to identify to for uh, quantitative test as a quantitative test. Can can you think about that? We are we are um, highly used that in uh, experiments or research. Biorate test uh, after color change added sodium hydroxide. Yes, after color change, add in sodium hydroxide. So that will help to develop a color. So how can we use other color formed to uh, calculate the amount of protein present in a sample? So copper sulfate is sodium hydroxide with anokata, peptide bonds, tianokata, purple color uh, solution. So, we have to make a quantitative test. 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 We have to make a We We uh, calibration curve and uh, uh, since we know the absorbance value of the particular uh, sample so we can calculate uh, or determine the protein concentration in a given sample okay absorbance value we have we can color develop in our develop in our but absorbance value when the long spectrophotometer effect better what uh, uh, protein concentration in result in color ready. So, the main property of the power chicken quantitatively protein at the protein concentration in calculate color. So, this is this is widely used in research. So, that's why I asked, uh, that's why I, I told that to you. Okay, so. So I will show you the video. So after that, if you have any questions, we can further discuss about a biorate test. And 
3 millimeter from the egg gel building. Next, uh, we are going to add um, a few uh, drops of uh, copper sulfate solution into each of these test solutions. We have already added a uh, copper sulfate into this uh, test solution that means casein, pepton, albumin and uh, gelatin and uh, now we are going to add uh, sodium hydroxide into each of these test tubes. So we are going to add few drops from the sodium hydroxide. You may see a color change in this solution. Now, you may be able to see how the color change when we add sodium hydroxide into these uh, test samples. You will see all the uh, protein reactors to this pyruvate test. Okay. But there is a limitation of this test. We will see what it is. Uh, I told you that there is a, a limitation of this test. That means this uh, test gives a color change for any uh, com compound having a bioweight group. Let's uh, see this using a urea sample. I have taken a uh, few crystals of urea into a boiling tube and now I am going to heat it. When we heat, uh, the residue is a bioweight. We are going to heat this for few minutes. And now we have heated it and the residue is a pyruvate. And 
we are going to allow it to cool for a few minutes. After uh, heating the urea in the Bunsen burner, we have let it cool for a few minutes. And uh, after cooling, you may see the sample got solidified. Then, this re I told you this residue is the bile. And uh, for this, we are going to add uh, 2 milliliters of distilled water. And we are going to shake it well. Then for this urea sample, we are going to add few drops of copper sulfate and a few drops of sodium hydroxide accordingly as we did uh, previously for the protein sample. First, we will add few drops of copper sulfate. Then, we are going to add few drops from sodium hydroxide. You will see this urea also produce a color uh, similar to the protein sample. See, yeah, these are the protein samples and uh, this one is the urea sample. So, it is a limitation uh, that we fit. Okay, do you have any, any questions regarding that? So that, uh, the, what I explained was nicely uh, demonstrated in the uh, video. So, so can you see the, this, can you see the slides? Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is what uh, what I meant by protein denaturation. You know that upon uh, heating agents like heating pH and uh, heavy metals, protein get uh, denatured. Okay. So so this is the biorate test reaction. Uh, the principle behind bioreactors is that CO2 plus CO2 uh, copper to iron uh, can form coordination complex. Means Sangyukta Sankirna Kadana Pulwa CO2 plus sort of peptide bond vector. See, in an alkaline medium. So that's why we add, we need to add sodium hydroxide. CO2 plus can form a coordination complex with peptide bonds in an alkaline medium. So that's the principle behind biorate test. So that's the biorate reaction. Okay, see. So other uh, groups, you know that in, uh, in an uh, amino uh, acid, there's a, a R group, carboxylic group, and uh, 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 two other groups. So what in all in this uh, form uh, complex formation is the uh, peptide bonds, okay, only the peptide bonds, not other groups, okay. So uh, this can form complexes with peptide-like bonds, okay. That's the limitation of this test. So see, 
this is the peptide bond, normal peptide bond, C double O N H like bonds. So when uh, when urea uh, is heated, it can form pe peptide like bonds. See, this is peptide like bonds. Okay, this is not a actual peptide bond, but it is peptide like bond. Okay, so Cu two plus the uh, don't know about that, then Cu2 plus can form a complex with peptide like bonds also. So that will give uh, again a purple color complex. So that's a that's one limitation of this test. Okay, urea is not a protein, but it can give positive result for this test. Okay, you have you need to understand that clearly. Okay. So that's the theory behind biorate test. Okay, do you have any questions? Questions? If you have anything to clarify, this is the time. Okay, then since you, you don't have other questions, I will move on to the next experiments that we need to, that we're supposed to discuss in this uh, practical series, that is anthropotic reaction, or anthropotic test. So for that, this is also a very uh, simple biochemical experiment. Uh, in here, you have to take about the three milliliters of the protein solution, and you have to add uh, one minute, one minute of concentrated nitric acid and boil for a minute or two. After that, you have to uh, cool thoroughly under tap water, and after that, you have to add uh, concentrated ammonia or concentrated sodium hydroxide to basify the solution. Okay, so uh, so santhoprotic the re, uh, the principle in santhoprotic uh, reaction or test is different than biorate test. Okay, so do or do, or do anyone know uh, the uh, theory or the principle behind santhoprotic reaction? Or what will produce in this test? What will what will be the uh, Results of this test. And is it, what do you think? Is it to uh, distinguish all the proteins? Will all the proteins give positive results for santhoprotic reaction? Anyone? Do you have any idea? Only aromatic group? Yes, only aromatic. Groups containing amino acids will give positive results for santhoprotic testing. Okay, then uh, we cannot say that all the proteins will give positive results for santhoprotic reactions, reaction or santhoprotic test. Okay, only the uh, aromatic groups containing amino acids having proteins will give positive results for santhoprotic reaction. Okay. So uh, I know that I went through your uh, theory notes and uh, Dr. Madhubashini has uh, given to you uh, examples for aromatic groups contain amino acids as well as aliphatic groups contain amino acids. So I'm not going to ask about uh, aliphatic groups contain amino acids. Tell me what are the amino, uh, aromatic groups containing um, uh, amino acids? What are the amino acids you know that contain aromatic rings? You know, proteins are consisting of amino acids, and some amino acids contain um, aromatic rings in their structure as R groups. So, what are the examples for such amino acids? A uh, few students uh, correctly mentioned, uh, answered the question tyrosine, tryptophan. Phenyl alanine, yes. And this, uh, you, you should know this, uh, the biochemistry exam will be tricky, okay? Uh, this is more parallel to uh, your theory content, okay? So you need to know the theoretical aspects as well as uh, the practical aspects if you need to pass this as pass biochemistry, okay? So I will not, I haven't teach any uh, uh, thing that uh, is not tally with your theory uh, lessons. Okay, 
So, uh, so I got this chart from Dr. Madhubashini's lecture, I think. You must be familiar, familiar with that. So she has given aromatic R groups containing amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. So this kind of uh, aromatic rings containing amino acids will give positive results for xanthoprotic reaction. Okay, so xanthoprotic reaction is this. Okay, this is a very simple one. Uh, we, in here, we add concentrated acid, nitric acid, and after that, we add concentrated base, okay, sodium hydroxide or uh, ammonia. So ammonia, sodium hydroxide is, is preferred than ammonia, okay? So uh, when we add in uh, uh, nitric acid, this kind of nitrogen uh, derivatives can be formed in this amino uh, aromatic ring, okay? This is called nitration. Okay, if you can remember in your organic conversions, organic polyvalent well, the nitrate terminate and be concentrated HNO3 at Karat. So this is called nitration or nit nitrogen derivatives. Okay, so uh, that is in yellow color. So when we add sodium hydroxide, this yellow color turn into orange yellow color. So this is the positive result of this anthropotic reaction. Okay. So you can, as you can see, no other um, uh, uh, groups in the amino acid is, is involved, are involved with this reaction. Only the aromatic ring involved with this reaction. Okay. amino acid groups, hydrogen group picker, R group picker, NH2 group picker, C double OH group picker. R group picker with the other amino acid aromatic ring so in here, as you can see, uh, no other groups are involved with this reaction, only the uh, aromatic ring involved with this reaction. So any aromatic group containing amino acids can give positive results for xanthoprotic reaction. Okay, this is very uh, important. Okay, so here you can see, so tyrosine contain this kind of aromatic ring and when I didn't consider nitric acid and sodium hydroxide, it can nitrated product is in a yellow orange color. Okay, so tryptophan. Similar, similarly, it will give nitrated products, which is in yellow orange color. Yellow color, when we add in sodium hydroxide, that will turn into yellow orange color. Okay, so penal aniline, that is, a uh, if you uh, go through few uh, biochemistry books, uh, in some biochemistry books, uh, it has mentioned that uh, it will not give positive results for a xanthoprotic reaction, but it will give. We have to heat that for, uh, for a longer period of time than the tyrosine and tryptophan. Okay, so principally similar, it will get uh, nitration when we add concentrated HNO3 and the product will turn into uh, orange yellow color colored product when we add in sodium hydroxide okay so tyrosine tryptophan as well as phenylalanine containing proteins will give positive results for xanthoprotic reaction okay so let me ask one question so if you as a bio biochemistry uh, student or student uh, who studied biochemistry. So if you are given to uh, identify proteins or distinguish uh, protein sample from uh, other biological samples, what do you use? You, uh, do you going to, are you going to use xanthoprotic test or biorate test? protein sample protein
Ariratna Arya Peru. What do you think? Okay, definitely we have to use a bioreactor test because you know that uh, xanthoprotic test will give positive results only for proteins containing amino acids with aromatic groups. Okay, so you know that uh, some proteins may not contain uh, amino acids uh, with aromatic groups, it means uh, tryptophan, tyrosine, and phenylalanine, but most proteins at least they contain few amounts of these one of these uh, amino acids. So most proteins will give positive results for xanthoprotic reaction, but you need to know the principle. Okay, good up to the hammer protein, up with the protein in aqua gamer, may xanthoprotic reaction make a positive results. They know more than no amino acid protein, 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 amino acid amino acid amino acid amino acid there are uh, actually there are uh, 22 amino acids exist uh, naturally. So, so um, proteins are consisting of uh, sequence of uh, any this uh, combination of these amino acids. So most proteins contain um, at least one uh, phenylalanine, uh, tryptophan, or tyrosine, like. Uh, uh, aromatic group contain amino acids. So most protein will give positive results, but we cannot assure that, okay? So <clears throat> the principle in bioreactor test is stronger than uh, xanthoprotic reaction, okay? So you know that all the proteins contain peptide bonds, okay? So, so to understand that, you need to know the theory. That's why I, I nicely uh, explained this to you, okay? So I will show you the practical protocol. So after that, if you have any questions, you can ask. Then I'm going to add one milliliter of conch nitrate to each of these samples.
going to boil these prepared samples in the Bunsen burner. I'm going to boil it for a minute or two. I have already boiled the sample. This is the other tip. And uh, I'm going to heat cool it uh, under the tap pot. After cooling, I'm going to add sodium hydroxide in excess to this. Here, you may see a, a orange color formation in the sample. Then we will do this for all of the other three samples we have. The next sample we have is the uh, pepton. I have already added conk nitrate to this and I am going to uh, boil this for a few minutes. Now, I'm going to cool it Cool it under the tap And now I'm going to add sodium hydroxide in excess to this solution. Here also you may see a color change. Okay, this is the pepton. Then, I'm going to heat the sample of casein and uh, here also I, we have already added the comp nitrate and I'm going to heat this. After boiling for a few minutes, I'm going to cool it.
okay after cooling as in the similar way we are going to add sodium hydroxide in next here you may see in casein also it gives a color change then finally we are going to test it with the HRV mix I have already added corn nitrate to this and I am going to boil it After boiling for few minutes, I'm going to cool this up. After cooling, again I am going to add sodium hydroxide in next See here. You may observe a color change in this sample also. So, uh, the observation of this is that we got uh, all the, the all the protein samples we use either natural or um, either natural or synthetic protein, all of these samples gave a positive, uh, positive result for the sample product test. Okay, do we have any questions regarding sample product uh, test? And what can you say about the uh, the tested samples? Gelatin, peptone, egg albumin, and casein. They all gave positive uh, the positive results for the synthetic reaction. That means uh, the all the samples contain uh, amino acids which have in which have in aromatic rings, or so it can be tryptophan, phenylalanine, or tyrosine. Okay. Okay. So let me ask one question from you. Will a biorate test uh, give positive results for tryptophan? So if you use a tryptophan sample, tryptophan amino acid solution, so will biorate test give positive results? What, what is your opinion? If you if we use uh, uh, this, say tyrosine as the sample solution, will it give positive results for biorate test? Yes, sir, it will. Why? Biorate the test for uh, proteins in general. So obviously, tryptophan is a amino acid. The so it will give. So uh, actually, biorate test is uh, the principle behind biotest is that uh, it will give positive results upon uh, the presence of peptide bonds then what can you say uh, will these amino acids contain uh, so I, I told you that uh, we we are going to test an amino acid solution 
So usually do these amino acid contain peptide bonds. So if it's a, if it's a, a pure amino acid solution, so there cannot be peptide bonds. So proteins, all the proteins, yes, biorate test will give positive results, but uh, for amino acid solutions, it may not. Is that clear? Yes. Biorate test take a positive results, then name peptide bonds take a CO2 plus water a coordination complex. Amino acid solution take a peptide bonds, then on. Protein when I buy uh, amino acids when I. Protein ke lagya ne amino acids peptide bonds solin ekatwila hadicha complex polymerase. Eta kote amino acid uh, as a single component it may not contain peptide bonds. So will it give positive results for biorate test? No. If it's a poor, poor amino acid, uh, it will not give positive results. Okay. Uh, naturally, it can have some form of peptide bonds between those amino acids, but if it is if uh, uh, if it is uh, given that if it is if it is said that uh, you are going to test for amino acid, so you have to be careful. So that's why I told you that this practical evaluation is a little bit tricky. Okay, you need to understand the theory well. Is that clear? Amino acid kela kya ne vena meka protein kela kya ne vena meka. Dem dem balan me test deke objectives deke na tam principles deke vena. Santoprotic reaction meka tyrosine wala ta tyrosine amino acid deke ta hi tyrosine containing protein deke ta hi deke ta me positive results dena. Namut biorate test ka amino acids wala ta vitara positive result deke dena na ek dena protein wala ta mukada AK positive result is the peptide bonds in on now with Is that clear? So then uh, the final uh, qualitative test I'm going to discuss with you about uh, uh, is the sulfur reaction. So in here also this is a very uh, small test. Again, the principle is totally different from the uh, previous two experiments. Okay, please understand that very clearly. In here, we are going to boil the protein solution with few drops of sodium hydroxide solution for a few minutes and then add a drop of uh, or two of lead acetate solution. Okay. Then after that, we are going to observe the changes. Okay. Then uh, in sulfur reaction, uh, what are the sulfur uh, containing amino acids? You know. So you know that. What are the sulfur contain amino acids? Sulfur, dango amino acids, one one. You know that uh, I told you in the very beginning, the elements of proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So apart from that, some amino acid contain sulfur as an element. Then, uh, can you give examples for that? Cysteine. And uh, one has answered as cysteine. And you know, what is the other one? Yes, methionine. Good. Cysteine and methionine. Okay. So, yes, we students have, uh, have answered correctly, very correctly, cysteine and methionine. So, so you will see uh, this uh, sulfur reaction will give results, positive results uh, for sulfur contained amino acids, but not both. Okay, so first uh, I will uh, tell you the reason. This is cysteine and this is methionine. So when we uh, look into the structure, cysteine and methionine both contain sulfur in their structure. Okay, but only cysteine contain terminal sulfur. Okay. So in this uh, experiment, we are going to add uh, lead acetate. Okay, so uh, so we, upon addition of lead acetate, it will give lead sulfide. It can form lead sulfide. That's the uh, intended observation or the positive result of this test. So among the sulfur-containing amino acids, 
only cysteine can cysteine can give positive results because it it only contain terminal sulfur even though methionine also contain sulfur but it is not a terminal sulfur okay it, it cannot react with lead pb2 plus okay so this will not give positive results so basically sulfur reaction or sulfur test is to identify methionine amino acid or methionine sorry cysteine amino acid containing proteins or cysteine amino acid okay so again we can use this uh, test to distinguish between cysteine and methionine or cysteine versus other amino acids okay is that clear don't uh, mix that uh, cysteine and methionine both will not give positive results for sulfur test okay the reason is that only cysteine contain terminal sulfur which can react with pb2 plus okay so this is in the in the middle of the structure so it is hard to uh, react with pb2 plus okay so only cysteine will give positive results in this reaction Then after boiling, I'm going to add one or two drops of lead acetate into this. white color precipitation in the pepton. Then next I am going to use the gelatin. Here I am going to add few drops of sodium hydroxide. And I am going to boil it.
after boiling i am going to add few one or two drops of blend acetate into this test solution you may observe a white color precipitation in the gelatin also then i'm going to use the egg albumin sample then first add few drops of sodium hydroxide then boil it in the burner After boiling, I'm going to add lead acetate. After adding um, lead acetate into the egg albumin. you may see a black color precipitation in this test tube then i'm going to casing sample you also we are going to add few drops of sodium hydroxide and then i'm going to beat it in the bunsen burner After boiling this, I'm going to add lead acetate into the test sample. Okay. You may observe, you may observe a white color precipitation in casing also, and. Uh, The final observation is uh, we got white precipitation for pepton, casein, and gelatin, while we got the black color precipitation for egg albumin. so that's the uh, observations for sulfur reaction so as you can see uh, when we uh, boil in the sample with sodium hydroxide uh, the terminal sulfur will turn into sulfide inorganic sulfide and uh, upon addition of uh, lead acetate sulfide ions can react with pb2+ and form black color precipitation that is lead sulfide okay so uh, i think you have learned that uh, how can we uh, assure that the black color precipitation is lead sulfide so you have learned that you, you, it is very uh, very well tested in advanced level chemistry so lead sulfide Like lead sulfide, like like any other one. Is it soluble in water? Lead sulfide precipitate. Yes, PBS. Lead sulfide is black color. Then it's not soluble in water. It's not soluble in water, but it is soluble in uh, dilute acids like HCl. If we add HCl, that will uh, the, the precipitation will uh, dissolve. and uh, it will form a complex pbcl4 to minus okay so if we need to confirm that whether it is a lead sulfide so uh, we can simply add uh, hcl so it is the the precipitation will be disappeared
Okay, so that's the principle of a uh, sulfur reaction. So as you aware by now, the uh, we have discussed few qualitative tests for uh, proteins, for evolution test, presentation test, for the very simple kind of tests. After that, we we uh, move on to colorimetric experiments or color the reactions which give a uh, colors okay so first we discussed about biorate reaction biorate in biorate reaction peptide bonds uh, can uh, react with cu 2 plus ions in an alkaline solution and will give purple color uh, coordination complex in uh, xanthoprotein xanthoprotein uh, reaction amino acids containing uh, aromatic groups can react with hmo3 and get nitrated and form the nit nitrogen derivatives. And uh, after when adding excess sodium hydroxide, it can uh, turn into deep orange color. Okay, then in a sulfur reaction, uh, amino acids which contain terminal sulfur, that means uh, cysteine as the amino acid containing proteins, can proteins as well as amino acids can give positive results, that means the lead sulfide precipitate, okay. So white, uh, why white color uh, precipitation uh, for other three samples? So that can be other sulfide, uh, uh, sulfide compounds. I don't know exactly what is there, what is there, because I don't know exactly the sequence of amino acids in those samples, okay. So it's like uh, the, the genetic sequence. It can, it can be uh, many, many amino acids and the sequence and the, uh, the uh, amino acid types is different and it can be other sulfide compounds, okay? But specifically, if there's cysteine, it will form black color precipitate, okay? That is lead sulfide, okay? If you need to confirm that, that's why I told you that, if we need to confirm whether that is lead sulfide, we can just add HCl. Okay, then it will turn into PBCl42 minus and dissolve. Okay, so do you have any questions? You need to uh, face to a practical examination, and as I I told you, this practical examination will be tricky. Okay, so it's better to participate for the practical sessions and we will have another session tomorrow and it will be a complex titration for so instance formal titration that is for quantitative identification of protein okay so in there we have to do uh, three titrations and you need to know exactly how we are going to uh, do the calculation okay therefore i recommend you to participate for that practical session it's up to you. You can decide if you know the, the theory behind the, the, the practicals. And if you do the, okay, you can conduct the calculations, that's fine. But uh, don't mess up the, these things. If you understand this properly, you can easily score for the biochemistry. But if you do not know the theory, you will be in a big trouble. Okay. So that's why I uh, simply explained to you everything in this uh, practical series with parallel to your theory uh, aspects. Okay, so utilize that. So uh, you have to face for the practical examination for this under this subject. Okay, do you have any questions? This is the time to ask. Okay, then if you do not have anything to clarify, I'll stop from here. Thank you.